Cody Rhodes will defend the undisputed WWE title on Saturday, August 31st at Bash in Berlin. Cody and general manager Nick Aldis nominated Kevin Owens as the next title challenger during Friday's SmackDown after Kevin Owens came to Cody Rhodes' aid in an angle against Sola Sokoa's bloodline on the show. Kevin Owens was reluctant to accept the title bout, insisting that he had not earned it, but Cody and Nick were adamant about Kevin Owens getting the title shot. Nick Aldis eventually made the title match official in a backstage segment. Rhodes defending the undisputed WWE Championship against Kevin Owens is the second bout official for Bash at Berlin. Already announced, new WWE World Heavyweight Champion Gunther will defend his title against Randy Orton at the event in Germany. And speaking of getting title shots, Santos Escobar defeated Andrade on Friday to earn a future United States Championship match. The finish of the match had Carmelo Hayes interfere, pulling Escobar out of danger as Electra Lopez distracted the referee. The confusion allowed Santos to roll up Andrade for the win. Right before the match, LA Knight came out for a United States Championship celebration after he defeated Logan Paul last weekend at SummerSlam. Escobar interrupted the celebration and said LA Knight winning the title was nothing more than a fleeting moment and an opening act to his own championship reign. LA Knight said it didn't matter who won the number one contenders match as everyone knows that it's his game. And speaking of LA Knight, according to a new report from Fightful, LA Knight will remain in WWE for years to come and with more money in his bank account. The outlet reported that during the summer, LA Knight both restructured and extended his existing WWE contract for both a large money increase and significant time. His original deal was set to expire in early 2025. The two sides had been reportedly negotiating as far back as the fall of 2023. After a run in the NWA, the man once known as Eli Drake debuted in NXT in February 2021 under his new name and was called up to the main roster in January 2022 as a manager named Max Dupree, which was eventually dropped. In 2023, LA Knight's popularity exploded thanks to his promos. Set to turn 42 this November, LA Knight defeated Logan Paul for the United States title at this past weekend's WWE SummerSlam to begin his first WWE title reign of any kind. We're also going to be seeing a SummerSlam rematch, which is set for next week's Raw. On this week's show, Sami Zayn was despondent backstage over his loss against Braun Breaker on Saturday. Jey Uso attempted to cheer him up, saying he knew he'd get his title back in a rematch. Sami then revealed he already went to Adam Pearce and got the rematch for next week. The graphic for next Raw announced it would be a 2 out of 3 falls match. Braun Breaker did defeat Sami Zayn at SummerSlam to win the Intercontinental title for the first time, ending Sami Zayn's reign that started at WrestleMania 40. And after not being part of this past weekend's WWE SummerSlam, Bronson Reed did his best to ensure that won't happen again after destroying Seth Rollins during WWE Raw. A subdued and serious Seth Rollins came out to share some thoughts with CM Punk, and Punk called out Drew McIntyre for another match on Raw. He said like Punk, he was also in a good mood because after 10 years, it was time to put Punk in the dirt. As the two were about to fight, Drew McIntyre appeared in the crowd to mock both of them and show CM Punk that he had his family bracelet. Punk then took his eyes off of Rollins and darted off to chase Drew in the stands. That left Seth alone in the ring, where Bronson appeared out of nowhere to lay him out. And although Seth Rollins fought back, Bronson Reed hit him with a Death Valley driver before several sentons and two tsunami splashes from the top rope. Officials and referees tried to get Bronson out of the ring area, but he decided to head back and hit a third, fourth, fifth, and sixth tsunamis instead. He then headed back to the ring and teased another before officials pulled Rollins away. Michael Cole and Pat McAfee put over how Bronson Reed was saying during the week that he was going to make a statement, and that he did. The two have only shared the ring once, that being in a six-way elimination chamber match for the U.S. title back in 2023. And on to our next story. Amid swirling rumors that he and his brother are heading to WWE, current AEW star Ray Phoenix has pulled out of a September indie appearance due to what is being called personal circumstances. El Paso, Texas-based New Era Wrestling had booked the 33-year-old for a three-way on Friday, September 27th. Late Thursday night, the promotion then released a statement 
saying that Ray Phoenix would be unable to participate in their Lucha Libre event due to the personal circumstances. News broke last week that it's expected that Ray Phoenix and Pencil Cero Miedo are expected to leave AEW, with our own Brian Alvarez reporting that the internal belief within WWE is that they are heading there. They were reportedly slated to compete for the AEW trio's titles at All In, but that plan was taken off the table. Lucha Libre Online reported back in June that Penta's contract was set to expire between August and September of this year, with Fightful reporting last week that Ray Phoenix's contract was also coming up at the same point this year. On to our next story, Women's World Champion Liv Morgan is the latest member of the WWE roster to sign up with Paradigm Talent Agency. It was announced via Variety that Paradigm has signed Liv Morgan as a client. Damian Priest, Tiffany Stratton, CM Punk, and Drew McIntyre have also joined Paradigm recently. It's one of the biggest talent agencies in Hollywood, trailing William Morris Endeavor, Creative Artist Agency, and United Talent Agency. Liv Morgan had her first movie role in The Kill Room, which was released back in September 2023. Shifting over to some AEW news, Britt Baker's storyline and real-life suspension are both over as she appeared on Wednesday's AEW Dynamite via video to call out TBS champion Mercedes Monet and Camille. After Camille won a handicap match, Mercedes took the mic and once again thanked the EVPs, the Young Bucks, for their suspension of Baker. As she continued to talk, Tony Schiavone interrupted her with a message from Christopher Daniels via Tony Khan that Tony had overruled the Bucks and Baker's suspension was lifted. Tony Schiavone then threw it to Baker, who was live via satellite. Britt threw some verbal jabs towards Mercedes, including that whenever things don't go her way, she takes her ball and goes home. Britt then said she has seven days to figure out how she will get her hands on Mercedes next week. Britt was storyline suspended by the Bucks for her recent actions against Mercedes, but was suspended and fined in real life by AEW after a backstage confrontation with both MJF and Alicia Atute on the 250th edition of Dynamite. The suspension was believed to be either one or two weeks, according to our very own Dave Meltzer. Tony Khan commented on his meeting with Shane McMahon during a recent interview with ESPN Radio. A photo of McMahon and Tony Khan in a meeting room leaked online last week with Fightful and Russell Talk reporting the two had met to discuss possibilities moving forward. The AEW president was asked about it while appearing at Sedano and Camp on Tuesday, to which he said, well, as I understand, he's not doing anything with WWE, and I had a really nice visit with him. I heard from a lot of people that he was interested in talking and it had become, frankly, a big media story to the point where I was getting asked on the record questions about it. And I answered them and just like I'll answer you now. I had never met him in advance of my first conversation with him. There was a lot of buzz about this, so I thought it would certainly be worth talking. And I have a lot of respect for him. I had never met him, but he seemed like a really nice guy. I really enjoyed talking to him and he is a very smart person about wrestling and I thought he was a great guy. And we have a lot of mutual friends and we both happen to be in Dallas. Tony Khan also noted that it was a mutual friend who put them in contact. Tony Khan then stated that the picture leaked online was taken by someone who busted in and took the photo. There is nothing wrong with a couple of people getting together and talking about wrestling. I think that's part of what makes wrestling so great is that there are a lot to talk about and we're all fans at heart. Moving on to our next story. In an interview with Gorilla Position, Brian Danielson briefly discussed how his feelings toward Vince McMahon have changed in the wake of Janelle Grant's lawsuit. Danielson has expressed love and admiration for Vince McMahon in the past, writing in a 2021 Players' Tribune article that he wishes more people could view Vince in the way that he does. While it's been tough for Brian Danielson to see everything that has come out since then, he knows that what really matters are the feelings of those who have allegedly been victimized by Vince. Grant's lawsuit accuses Vince McMahon of physical and emotional abuse, sexual assault, and sex trafficking. WWE and John Laurinaitis are also named as defendants. Vince McMahon resigned from the WWE this January while John Laurinaitis was fired from the company in 2022. John Laurinaitis is Brian Danielson's father-in-law, but Danielson seemingly indicated to Gorilla Position that John Laurinaitis and Kathy Colas, the mother of Brie Garcia, are not together anymore. To which he said, 
But yeah, there's not a lot I want to say about it, honestly, other than that. Because it's not just the Vince piece, it's also my father-in-law, maybe my ex-father-in-law, as far as that kind of stuff goes. It's just, you know, you think you know somebody in some way, and then something happens, and it changes, and that's always hard. But like I said, as hard as that may be for me emotionally, like this emotional thing, it's way worse for people who have been victimized by people in power. Additionally, Brian Danielson did open up about the status of his neck. The AEW star sat down with Jim Ross in an interview that aired during Collision. When talking about the things he had done during his career, he brought up the status of his neck, saying he'd likely need surgery soon. He ended the sit down by talking about his upcoming match against Swerve Strickland at All In on August 25th. He said every time he has failed, he's learned something about himself. Brian said that he thinks now he is the most mentally strong he's ever been in his career, and that is what will get him through the match at Wembley Stadium. Danielson has made it a point to say that he will be ending his run as a full-time wrestler this year. He has recently raised the stakes of his upcoming title match, putting his career on the line over Strickland's AEW World Championship. And on to some more pro wrestling news, NXT is going on the road to kick off its move to the CW. Shawn Michaels revealed on social media that the October 1st premiere episode of NXT on the network will air live from Chicago's Allstate Arena. He also announced that the brand will head to St. Louis the following week. The launch on CW happens in Chicago, Illinois' Allstate Arena October 1st. WWE's press release announcing the live events also mentioned special appearances from CM Punk and Randy Orton on the shows from Chicago and St. Louis. Last November, WWE announced a five-year deal with the CW to bring NXT to the network. TKO head Ari Emanuel would later tell investors the deal is a 70% increase from the previous one with NBC Universal, which was estimated between 20 to 25 million annually. Now on to some TNA wrestling news. Six months after departing TNA Wrestling, Scott Demore has confirmed his next move. Scott Demore announced that he's reviving the Maple Leaf Wrestling brand, starting with two events this October. Maple Leaf Pro Wrestling will be at St. Clair College in Windsor, Ontario, Canada on Saturday, October 19th and Sunday, October 20th. The shows are set to air as pay-per-views on Triller TV. Scott Demore has been gearing up for the announcement with trademark filings related to Maple Leaf Wrestling in recent months. He was fired from TNA Wrestling this February as part of a leadership shakeup. Scott Demore was president of TNA and now has that title with Maple Leaf Pro Wrestling. After Scott Demore's firing, the TNA roster expressed support for him on social media and in a letter to Anthem Sports and Entertainment. Josh Alexander is a top TNA star and will also compete for Maple Leaf Pro Wrestling. He tweeted about the revival, saying, I'm excited to be a part of what will showcase the absolute best Canadian wrestling has to offer. The resurrection of Maple Leaf Wrestling for future generations. Follow it, it's going to be big. Additionally, TNA Bound for Glory will emanate from the Wayne State University Fieldhouse in Detroit, Michigan on Saturday, October 26th, as revealed by the company during Thursday's Impact episode. And last but not least, former X Division champion Mustafa Ali is done with TNA Wrestling as of now, according to a new report from Fightful. Ali posted a farewell letter to the X Division last week on social media after his defeat to TNA World Champion Nick Nemeth, but it wasn't fully clear if he was wrapping things up with his tenor overall. He first announced he was heading to TNA in January as part of a post-WWE World Tour that has seen him in the rings of New Japan Pro Wrestling, GCW, Deadlock Pro, and Prestige Wrestling, among other groups. He made his TNA debut at No Surrender, defeating Chris Sabin for the X Division title. He would go on to wrestle 20 total matches for the company, defending the title eight times in that span in both TNA and several indies. He lost the title to Speedball Mike Bailey at July's Slammiversary. Ali is still taking indie bookings and has commitments through November, which includes a trip to Australia. That's a wrap for this episode of The Latest, catching you up on all things pro wrestling. We appreciate you for watching and please do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thank you.